What's up everyone? Lance Hedrick here, uh, two-time Latte Art World Champion uh, and beloved YouTube trainer. So uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to do the next phase of Latte Art, what I like to teach after the stack and wrap. If you have not seen my last video, I'm gonna link that here. If you haven't seen that and you haven't seen the ones before that, I would highly recommend going back and watching all of my milk ones leading up to this. They all kind of build off of one another. So we've got the milk steaming video right there. Um, and then after that, we have the basics of latte art, which now is linked right there as well. And then after that, we have the stack and wrap video, which I just did. Now this one's gonna build off of those. And in this video, we're gonna do ripple bases, ripple hearts. So ripples, we're gonna learn how to wiggle, okay? And then we're gonna be able to take that and the stack and wrap, and we're gonna be able to make a lot of different cool designs. And then my next latte art video will be, you guessed it, all the different styles of rosettas. Undetermined on when that'll be released, but uh, it's coming, so stay tuned. All right, so uh, before getting into this, I want to thank the sponsor for this video. Uh, they have sponsored two videos now, the one right before this and this one, and that sponsor is the wonderful company out of Houston, Texas called Slow Pour Supply. Now, I don't just partner with any company. This is a company with whom I've worked for a long time because I've been using their pitchers for forever. So for the past two or three years, I've been using this pitcher. So I am not coaxed by the money to uh, have them sponsor this episode. Uh, this money is going straight to production uh, so that we can give you an elevated experience and a more proper educational uh, environment. So uh, this is a slow pour supply pitcher, 15 ounce handleless round spout. I love it. They have all these other incredible looking pitchers with different spout variations, uh, different handles. And it's just incredible. I love Slow Pour Supply. They have they started as a pitcher company, and since then they have moved into all other facets of coffee, selling different uh, um, different uh, types of equipment like scales and hand grinders and cups. Uh, they have origami drippers, time more scales. Uh, it's incredible. Give them a look. They donate a percentage of all of their sales, um, and this year their goal is to donate twelve thousand dollars of their sales. So give them a look. I'm super appreciative of them for sponsoring this episode uh, and go give them a follow on their Instagram. All right, let's get into ripples. So the first thing I wanna talk about is how you grasp your pitcher. I did not go over this in the stacking uh, episode. That was purposeful. It's because with stacking, it doesn't really matter how you hold your pitcher. With rippling, it matters a lot more. So there are a lot of different ways that you can do this. A very common American, North American, like you in the USA, very common way of holding the pitcher uh, is like this which was originated in my opinion, or the first person I saw by nicely out in uh, California, holding it like so, kind of like a pin here and three fingers on the side so that you can ripple using kind of your wrist and your fingers so you can get some big fat lines, right? So this is a very valid and incredible way to hold it. A very uh, Another extremely famous worldwide way to hold it is also like you're holding a pin, but you're gonna ripple using your elbow. You see that? All right, and then there are other minor variations between that, uh, that are, are, are uh, really great to look into. Um, you can also obviously hold it like this. It's a lot harder uh, because you don't have as much control if you are gonna use your wrist, and you don't have as much control if you're gonna use your elbow. So if you wanna just full grip, grip it, you can. That's how I started. But just know there's a lot more control when you're holding it up here, right? When you're able to hold it like a pin or when you hold it like this for the heavier types of flows. That's getting uh, really into it, but I just wanted to go over some uh, common hand placements uh, that a lot of people observe. I use handleless, which means obviously I'm not rippling with my wrist. I do it with my elbow, and it's because I feel a lot more confident in the control of my elbow to kind of go back and forth in a rippling pattern. Now what I suggest when you learn how to ripple is to take your pitcher of your choice, fill it with water, and grab a cup, and then just work on ripples, consistent ripples, and working on how fast you're pouring as the, the amount of liquid in your pitcher is going down, all right? All right, so again, you're gonna take it, so obviously this is not consistent. That's not beautiful, that's not consistent. You want it to be consistent and you wanna increase your speed of the pour as you're dwindling with the water in your pitcher. So you wanna get used to the feeling of the volume and the weight going down, decreasing in your pitcher as you're maintaining the same type of flow. All right, so I'm gonna pour this again. I'm gonna spill it over myself again. All right, so once more, you're gonna take it and you're just gonna, you're just gonna ripple. and you're gonna work on that rotating of the cup so you don't spill everywhere, all right? So this is an incredible practice to do without wasting any milk or any espresso. You'll see this at latte art competitions. People are around with their pitchers and they are working on 
their flow rate for their design. So they're envisioning, they put it in some espresso and they're envisioning their design. They're up going. Right? So you can do that as well. Um, I highly recommend doing it for learning how to ripple. Okay. So now we have that idea down. You've gotten the water in your pitcher and you're working on rippling. All right. Now you're going, you're saying, great. I know how to ripple water. How do I ripple milk? Well, let's get into it. All right. Rippling milk. We're going to start with a rippled heart. All right. So we're going to, if you've, I'm assuming you have watched that video where we go over hearts and monks heads. What you're going to do for a rippled heart is very simple. You're going to take what we've just learned and you're going to apply all the mechanics of that heart. So if you remember the heart looks like, uh, looks like this right here with water. You're going to take it. You're going to fill that base. You're going to stop. You're going to get close about a quarter into the cup. You're going to go faster, 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 faster. You're going to slow lift, pull through. All right. Now with the rippling, what you're going to do is you're going to lay your base. You're going to stop. You're going to go a quarter in just like the blob but you're gonna go a little faster, boom, and you're gonna ripple forward, 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 until you stop, lift, pull through, okay? So you're gonna be doing that exact ripple that we did right up in front of you. So, so you can see in front, we're taking it, we stop, we're gonna lay our base, base is laid. We're gonna go in and watch my pitcher. Ripple, 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 pull through, okay? So that's how we're gonna be doing this with milk, all right? So let's take a look at how this looks with milk and we'll, t we'll dissect it with a slow-mo shot after I do the actual pour. All right, so let's dissect that pour. First, I'm gonna use my little illustrations that I've created for this. All right. So, the first thing that's happening in this pour is we're taking our pitcher and we are starting right here, just like in a blob heart, we're starting right here. And we're going to quickly release and go faster and faster like we do with the water and we're gonna start rippling forward. Ripple, 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 ripple forward. So what is going to happen, as, and we're gonna end right down here just below halfway. What's going to happen are these lines are gonna start coming out and they're going to start wrapping around as we move that sinkhole forward. Now, I have an illustration for another design that I wanted to show. So, what this will look like is we're going to start rippling and the lines are going to come out looking like this. You go ripple, 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 and they're going to start coming out like this. You want to start wide with your ripples and then as you move forward, get a little bit more and more narrow like you see in that video. Now we're going to cut back to the video and we're going to show it in slow motion. Now notice, when I after I lay my base, I drop in at the one quarter position and I begin to ripple widely. And then as those lines, watch it, you see how they are now uh, coming around and going to where the sinkhole is, they're making a full wrap. I am going through it quickly. I am trying to beat those lines coming to the sinkhole and I'm getting my ripples smaller and smaller and smaller as I go forward until I see there's a full wrap and now my sinkhole's just past halfway. I lift to connect all the lines and I draw through. All right, so that is how we do the ripple. That's how we're gonna do a rippled heart. You're gonna take that lesson we learned from the flow dynamics of the water, just going back and forth, getting that feel, and we're just gonna ripple forward, ripple forward, ripple forward. Now, I cannot stress this enough. When you're learning to ripple, do not be erratic. Now, in the future, once you have the flow down, you can absolutely speed it up and do quick ticks back and forth, but it takes a lot of practice. When you begin, have a nice gentle flow that you trust, that it feels good. Don't try to get a ton of lines. In fact, you'll have higher clarity without a ton of lines. And just kind of work on that back and forth. If you wanna do it like this, work on that back and forth. If you wanna do handleless, work on that back and forth. And just let the water whip side to side where it feels like it's a pendulum swinging, okay? So I'll, again, I like using my elbow because there's more control, but feel free to do this as well. This will be a lot harder because there's a lot higher flow, so it's a lot more to control, but Whatever you're choosing is gonna be great. And in, in a future episode, we'll go over the different types of flow. All right, now that we have that rippled heart, which we'll watch just one more time, so we're gonna to cut to it now. So as you see, I drop a quarter in, ripple, 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 ripple forward. All right, now I'm letting those lines coalesce and pull through. All right, so that's how we're gonna do the rippled heart. You start at that one quarter and we push just past halfway. Start at that one quarter and we push just past halfway with the rippling. And what we will get in the end is a nice lineated heart. 
All right, start up here where the top of our shape is since this is a one tier shape. And we're gonna push forward. So now we have the top of the shape and the design is nice and centered. All right, now that we have that rippled heart down, let's talk about what everyone loves, which is the rippled base. Now, what do I mean when I say rippled base? I'm talking about that fanned out, lineated bottom to those uh, tulips that we see all the time, those really pretty, difficult, lineated tulips. That base that looks like a squashed rosetta. How do we get those lineated bases? I'm about to show you. And then we're gonna put that, combined with our wrap and stack technique from the last video, we're gonna combine them and show you what exactly can happen when you have these basics down pat. So keep practicing the wrap and stack before moving to this. Once you're on this, practice that rippled heart until you have it down. Then let's move on to this. Now, if you remember from the last video, whenever you're doing more than one tier, you need to start a little further and a little further in the cup, depending on the amount of tiers, all right? So for this design, I'm gonna do, uh, what we're gonna do at the end of the video is a two tier shape. We're gonna do a rippled base, and then we're gonna do a heart inside of a heart, like from the last video, all right? So for this rippled base, imagine that we're gonna begin our pour a little deeper in the cup. Because that base will fan out, it will stretch like we discussed in the last video. I'm about to pour what a winged base looks like. That's the terminology for it typically is wing base. It's the wing of the design, that rippled base. Something that looks something like that and that's a bad, terrible drawing. The ripple is a lot harder to draw than the stacked tulip from last video, I apologize. But this is what I'm gonna be pouring so that you can see exactly what I mean. And of course, there are a lot of different styles on how to do this rippled base. We'll go over those styles in a future video. I'm just gonna do kind of my style on this, all right? All right, so let's cut to that side video so you can see exactly what I mean. All right, so that is how we're gonna do a rippled base. You start just past that one quarter mark where we started for the rippled heart because we're taking into account that stretching, that is inevitable. Uh, and then we are going to uh, ripple forward. All right, so let's look at my little illustrations that I know y'all are already loving so, so much. All right, so now let's look at my illustration. I accidentally wrote the X a little too high here. We're gonna drop right about here and we're gonna ripple all the way down to here to create a U shape for us to uh, fit our stacks inside of it. So we're gonna start here just like with the heart, but a little bit further. We're gonna start and we're gonna ripple, 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 ripple forward. And as we're rippling forward, those lines that started up here are gonna continue to wrap around. And as we move forward, those lines are gonna wrap, those lines are gonna wrap, and the lines at the very end are gonna wrap all the way, right? So boom, 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 boom. So really that first line is gonna be the outer one. I did that opposite with my finger, so I apologize. But as we're wrapping down, it's gonna go out and it's go in and in and in. And as we keep pushing forward, those lines are gonna wrap to the center, like here. So to begin with, and this is the one I showed on the ripple heart as well, you start your wiggle widely. And as you go down, you chase it with a thinner ripple. So you start ripple. And as you're losing milk and you feel it, you're pouring faster and faster and your ripple's getting a little thinner. So ripple, 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 ripple. You see that? You see that? So we'll start a little wider and faster, faster, faster. So if you go back and watch that uh, pour of me doing it, you can see that I start out a little wider and I go a little thinner as I keep on going forward. And the reason for that is if we keep doing wide ripples, the top ripples will sink down into it. Because as you go side to side with your ripples, you are slinging your sinkhole side to side. So if you are uh, going side to side really hardcore, what's gonna happen is those lines that we've created will sink and it will distort your, uh, your uh, pattern. All right. So here we have what happens after we go ripple, ripple, and we're pushing forward and rotating. Those first ripples, which are the outermost ones, are gonna keep expanding as we're rotating. See, as you rotate, this happens, all right? So those outer lines are gonna keep rotating and they're gonna wanna wrap and wrap and wrap. And as you keep going into the center and getting more and more narrow, it's gonna start forming this U shape of lines. And then boom, this is what it ends with. We start up here, ripple, 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 smaller, 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 until we're right here and we end with where that X is. So from the X, rippling forward to the X. And now we have that pie shape in which we can fill with our two wrapped heart. And I know these, these illustrations, I have it a little too high. Again, I'm not uh, an artist um, as far as pen and paper goes, so uh, I apologize for that. But you will start this design a little lower, so when we put those two hearts in, since it's a two-tier design, it won't wrap and infiltrate our design. And I will show you what to do and what not to do. What happens if we do a tier too high? I will show you that actually um, after we do a ripple. Um, actually, I'll show you that right now. So, 
Right now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you right now, we're gonna cut to the side video of what not to do in a two tier or more uh, design, which is laying the base up high where we typically would lay the rippled heart. What's gonna happen is that base is gonna smush into our next few tiers because every tier needs its own space. Uh, if we start pushing behind it, those nice lines that we have wrapped around are gonna wrap into the design, kill our clarity, kill our con contrast. And right after that, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do a ripple with a two stack heart proper with that proper spacing and how we can wrap and stack on top of this wing. All right, so we're gonna do the, the improper one first and then we're gonna show you what the proper one is and what you should be able to do if you have followed the last video and this video and combine the lessons of the wing and the wrap and stack. So here we go. Now watch when I lay the hearts up here. You see how that base is wrapping in? So that's what not to do. You see how small the design got and how the base wrapped into the heart? That is what not to do. You wanna lay further for that base so that there's separation between that top tier and your winged base. All right, All right so that's what not to do. Now we're gonna look at what to do with the ripple and the two wrapped heart. That means we have a two tier design with three layers. So we have to drop that base just a little further. Here's how we do it properly and what you should be able to do after some practice with the last couple of Latte Art videos. All right, for the last thing, I'm gonna do just one more pour to show you what you can do with these two lessons. That was obviously a basic thing, but the designs that have won the last few Coffee Fest Latte Art World Championships, which is different from the World Latte Art Championship, what has been winning those typically are tulips. So I'm gonna show you how you can pour just about any of those pours from your own home, no problem, with these lessons alone. Once you have the wrap and stack down, and once you have that ripple down, you can pour almost any of these uh, winning designs uh, without an issue. So check this out. I'm literally going to just ripple and then do a stack variation based off of what we have learned with concretization, wrapping, and that flow rate. All that was was the rippled base, wrap stack, wrap stack, triple wrap. All right, that is what you will be able to do with these lessons, pushing them together, combining them all from the very first lesson with the fundamentals to the to that uh, stack and wrap lesson to this lesson on wings. Now, of course, I'll do more advanced La Terre things. I'll do uh, different styles of pours, different things like that, but you should be well equipped to pour just about anything that you're seeing on Instagram with the exception of the animals, which we can get into in a future video potentially. Um, but for the most part, with this ripple lesson and with the wrap and stack, you should be geared up to do what you've been watching on Instagram. I'm happy to answer questions, of course. Uh, shoot me DMs of your videos, uh, but please only do the things that we have covered in this class, and I'll be happy to respond to those as best as I can. Now, I wanna thank Slowpour one more time for sponsoring this video. It is a huge help. It just helps with production, helps with the cost of everything. So thank you so much, Slowpour. Please give them a follow. Incredible company. I can't recommend them enough. My favorite pitchers revolutionized my game. And also, I wanna just uh, ask you, if you are um, into espresso, I have made this part one and part two video on espresso from theory to execution. Love for you to give that a view. Um, and of course, like and subscribe. And if you don't like it, please tell me why. I wanna make the best videos possible for you all. Um, so drop a comment uh, with that as well. Uh, find me on Instagram at Lance Hedrick. Uh, and I make a lot of posts about different, uh, different coffee things. A lot of filter coffee is on there, but also talk about latte and espresso. Anyway, thanks for giving me a chunk of your time yet again. I hope you enjoyed this video and cheers.